I read something the other day that has bothered me and I can't quite figure it out. I read that 20% of you, 18 to 30 year olds, admit to being on your smartphone while you're having sex. <laughs> I mean, really? I, how does that even work? I, 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 I don't know. So when I was asked to talk about entertainment and technology and how it affects the great American dream, I began to think about the American dream. And it can be many things to many people, but however you define it, for me, one of the most important aspects of that dream is family. Because when you think about it, it's really the one thing that we all in humanity have in common. At one point or another, we all became a family, came from a family, or are now a part of a family. And for me, family is very important, and I'm very lucky. I have a wonderful family. I've got a loving wife, three beautiful kids, not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but they're perfect in their imperfection. And being a dad has been the greatest job I've ever had. The second greatest job I've ever had is selling entertainment to people like you. And in order to do my job well, I need to study people. I need to know what makes you tick. I need to understand how you consume media, what you're willing to do to pay for it, and how technology plays a role. So I study people. Now the other night I was out to dinner and I couldn't help notice a young couple out on a date at the table next to us. And for most of the night, they looked like this. I'm sure you've seen this a lot. I know I have, and it bothers me. It bothers me because I feel like my colleagues and I in entertainment have contributed to this phenomenon. And it's a phenomenon that I call solitary connection. Now I define solitary connection as an isolated active interaction by a single person with someone or something on a personal device, whether alone or near other people, but not the ones the individual is connected to. And I'm afraid solitary connections are becoming more and more common all the time. Now, entertainment has been around since the dawn of civilization. And technology has always been there to help propel it forward. From as far back as when cavemen sat around and told stories to each other, <laughs> to the written word, to then the printed word, to live music, live theater, radio, silent movies, talking movies, television, and now the digital distribution of entertainment through things like YouTube and Twitter. Entertainment has always been a part of our life. And it has been a major contributor to changing society, especially when it comes to public opinion. Now, some of the milestones in entertainment over the last hundred years that I believe are great examples of this are things like the 1938 broadcast of Orson Welles' The War of the Worlds on radio. It was a performance so powerful that many Americans that listened that night truly believed there was an invasion from Mars. And in 1967, Stanley Kramer's Academy Award winning movie, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner? It touched a raw nerve across America, but started a nationwide dialogue about interracial relationships when just 12 months earlier in America, it was against the law for interracial couples to get married. In 1984, the most popular television show was The Cosby Show. Now all of a sudden, it was a story about an all of American family that just happened to be an African American family. And in 1998, Will and Grace became the number one hit show in America and for the very first time, positively portrayed gay people. And perhaps the most important event in the last hundred years that I think is an example of how entertainment affects society happened in Brazil, where recently there was a study that showed that Brazil's plummeting birth rate was linked primarily to the influence of a soap opera. Now, if you go back to 1960, 
There was a research study done in Brazil, and they did a profile of the average Brazilian woman. And back then, their profile was largely uneducated, largely unemployed, and had an average of 6.3 children in the household. Now, in 1965, a Brazilian television network began to show telenovelas or soap operas five days a week. They became the most watched, most popular shows in Brazil. And these were stories about women in positions of power and influence and very much in control of their lives. Forty years later, after watching these, in 2006, they did another study and found out that Brazilian women were now largely educated, largely employed, and now had an average of 1.8 children per household. Now, future filmmakers have the opportunity to organically incorporate positive social messages into their entertainment at places like the USC School of Cinematic Arts. And they've now created the Media Institute for Social Change. And Michael Taylor, the executive director, says that as filmmakers, the work that we do has a huge impact on our culture. With that comes an opportunity and maybe even a responsibility to use that impact for greater good. We want to be involved with training the next generation of filmmakers. Technology and entertainment have always been intertwined. And in recent years, entertainment has always traditionally been a medium that brings society closer together. In the slides I showed earlier, you saw mainly large people, large groups of people un enter being entertained and enjoying themselves. Now technology has taken a step forward, and with technology companies like HP and Dell, Pilot, Research in Motion, they've done a great job in creating things like the personal devices, like the personal computer, or the personal digital assistant, or the Blackberry. And then, of course, there's Apple a company that is as well known for their marketing genius as they are for their inventions. Their creations of the i-whatever, whether it is the iPod, the iPad, the iMac, or the iPhone, they've taken personal to a whole new level, and we've never been the same since. Just the use of the word I has been a dramatic impact on society. On the one hand, it's given we individuals a great sense of personal empowerment. But on the other hand, I believe it's also given us permission to be incredibly self-centered. Let's see how. On the left-hand side, these are examples of how entertainment has always been a communal experience. Whether you're watching a movie, watching a television show, listening to the radio, or even going outside and playing with your friends. Now, we've created this phenomenon I called solitary connections, where we can do all of that by ourselves with our personal device or our I-whatever. And I'm not so sure that that's giving us a positive step forward, especially for families. Now, when you add to this the use of the DVR, Netflix, Hulu, Facebook, YouTube, iChat, WeChat, and the over one million apps that you can now download on your personal device that gives us an unlimited number of opportunities for solitary connections. I believe we've now reached a tipping point in society that is not necessarily doing what we intended it to do. And it's a phenomenon that I call iTime. Now, iTime is a self-centered and highly controlled media consumption or communication activity that results in a solitary connection. Let's look at some statistics about eye time. 72% of people use a smart device during a meal. Over a third of people use their smart device during a movie in a theater. 20% use it during a religious service. And of course, there's that one in five of you out there, you know who you are, <laughs> that have admitted using their smart device during sex. 
I still don't get that. <laughs> Add to that television and video game consumption habits that show that two-thirds of Americans regularly watch television during dinner. 50% of American households have an average of three or more television sets. The television is on as long as you go to work, almost eight hours a day. And over 80% of fourth graders watch 14 or more hours of television per week, and yet only 8% of parents require their children to finish their homework before they watch television. Over 80% of Americans regularly play video games an average of 13 hours per week. Now don't get me wrong, I think entertainment and technology are wonderful aspects of society. And I truly believe that it can be a, a wonderfully enriching part of our lives. But I think we're at a point where we have to understand that we need to recognize that entertainment and technology are a means to a greater end. And without that understanding, I'm afraid that rather than enriching our lives and the lives of our families, it's gonna pull us apart. Which is why the last idea, and it's a very simple one, that I'd like to introduce to you, and it's something that we've tried to do in our family, and believe me, it's not that easy. It's the idea of we time. We time for me, I hope becomes the next tipping point in society, which allows us to strike a balance between our I time and our solitary connections and our family time. And I define we time as a conscious and conspicuous activity between two or more human beings, which may or may not utilize technology, but if so, only as a means to a leisurely and entertaining outcome. Now, there are many examples of we time that you can incorporate in your lives. Here are some examples that we've tried to do. Turn it off during dinner. Put the phones away, put the television set away, and actually eat a meal together with your family and have a conversation. You'd be amazed at what will come out of your children's mouths if they're not glued to the TV set. Head outdoors. Go for a hike. Take a bike ride. Have a picnic get some fresh air, throw the Frisbee. It's amazing what you can find when you go outside without your personal device. But when you do have a movie night or watch a television show, do it as a family movie night or a family TV night and watch the show together and then afterwards talk about it and help your children understand what the messages were in that television show. And then finally, what we've tried to do, which I think should happen once a week at a minimum, is to put on your calendar an unplugged family night, where from the time you get home, you don't have any telephones, you don't have any personal devices, you don't put the internet on, you don't watch television, and you are just hanging with your family. Now, the first few times you do this, it is torture mostly for the kids and partly for the parents, but I can assure you that over time, you can figure out what you need to do, and it becomes a wonderfully enriching experience for you and your family. So I'm hoping that we time will balance I time, and for God's sakes, turn your phone off when you're having sex. You'll have a lot more fun when you do. Thank you.